How do I get there? Oh. Shit. Okay. Um, so, I'm back at you with another horror game. This one's not made by YouTubers, though. It's called 8888 Needle, Alabama. It says use headphones for best experience. And I always do, but I made sure to put in both this time. They usually do with horror games. You want to use headphones. Maybe a really good surround sound system, but it's pretty good. Pretty immersive. Okay, chapter one. I think there's three chapters to this. I've just seen a little bit of it. Okay, today's the last day, and it would have been nice to see the blue sky one last time instead of this thick old, old fog, but oh well. This thick fog. This instead of this thick... Gosh dang. Okay, sorry. Okay, look around and read hot spots by zooming in and out by clicking mouse. Look at arrow a few seconds to proceed. Press arrow, change settings. Okay. I reckon it's going to be a busy day. I've got many of folks to say my farewells to. Okay, so... Uh, I ain't fit for these long walks. My whole legs is worn out. All right, let's see what these uh, settings are that speaks of. Whoa. Okay, just mouse sensitivity. Okay, everything seems really smooth right now, actually. I really like the mouse setting. Uh, that's the way it is. Oh. So are we just like moving from one motion picture to another? I'll go meet the Angle family first and spend some time with little Susie. She's about 12 and most of my favorite, my most favorite child in the world. She's as pretty as a Georgia peach always has a big smile. I often see her reading through this window here. She's been helping me to read and write, but that gibberish just don't stick in my head no more. I done learned how to write my name a few times, but the letter always turns upside down. Okay. I'll take these here flowers for Susie. That'll make her merry. All right, let's go. It's really weird. I've not, I guess like a visual novel I've kind of played before. It's kind of like that. This is where the town children play around this time of day, but I don't see no sign of them. They usually be out here raising cane, but not today. One time, some small children was playing near this pond and they saw someone moving about in it. Okay. When the children came closer, they saw an escaped black prisoner. I reckon he got shot while trying to escape because he was bleeding an awful lot. Right away, the children started throwing stones at him. One of the stones landed right in his eye and blinded him. This area was just puddles of red. That didn't stop the little rascals, though. They laughed and kept pelting until Susie came out. She gave the kids hell for what they'd done and made them scramble away. That is so sweet. Susie's a good girl. Susie told the prisoner to hide in her shed. She told no one about him but me. Boy, he was in terrible shape. Poor guy. That's pretty sad. Reminds me of some book I read when I was a kid. I can't remember what it's called, though. Well, the guards saw the blood stains here and figured that he was hiding nearby. They found him in the shed. And, and what? Hey, anybody home? It's me, old Godfrey. Look, I got some flowers for little Susie. That's funny. Why ain't they home? I'll come back after I meet some other folk. Maybe they're scared of us. Or are we going to jail? What are we doing? Where are we going? Going off to find ourselves on an adventure? Curious. 
There's George Grady's house over yonder. Let me go and say my goodbye to him. What? Wow, where's everyone today? The whole town feels doggone quiet. Ain't so much a mouse stirring about. Maybe everyone's at the temple, but I didn't hear about no ceremony or gathering today. At the temple. So, is this some kind of cult? Hey, George, you home? It's me, Godfrey. George and his missus must be trying for a child. Almost six years, no luck. George shared his plight with our Lord, Father Glorious, and was told to bring his lovely wife to the temple for a divine blessing with the Father himself. Oh, fuck. <laughs> well, oh, no. Well, that was almost nine months ago, and wouldn't you know, she gave birth to a healthy boy. Oh, oh my gosh. Wouldn't you know, wouldn't you know, divine blessing. Just the other day, I seen George here telling some old folks about how the town ain't gone put up with no more lies. He said the trust is broken in that we all ought to start an uprising. We've been lied to for too long. Those was his words. He must have found out. <laughs> Baby must have come out with brown eyes or something. There's Miss Wilson's place. She's an old widow that took care of me for many years. She's told me about the religion, but says they ain't allowed to go to no rituals because they're evil. She's a fine cook, too. Can't nobody cook like her. Just the other day, she brought me so much food to the ceremony that it didn't make a man's mouth water. Tarts and cakes and sandwiches. And I don't know what all. Ceremony. This has got to be a cult. Of course, none of us townsfolks got much to eat because the temple elders got served first, and then the temple guards had their fill. By and by, when it was our turn, there wasn't nothing left except crumbs. Totally, this is a cult. This house is decaying and in shabby condition. Oh, it's in shabby condition. <laughs> I should have listened to Ms. Wilson and painted it when I had a chance, but my brain can't remember so good. It's late. late. <laughs> this is hard. It's the least I could done to repair for the kindness. Hey, there she is, sitting at the window. How do you do, Miss Wilson? Maybe she'll offer me a cup of cocoa. That's my most favorite treat, and it'd be swell to enjoy it one last time. She got a weird ass door. Open up, miss. I've been thinking about meeting you since morning. It's good to finally see someone in town. Ma'am, it's me, Godfrey. I saw you at the window just now. Hello. Why, gee, Willikins, something ain't right. Has it happened already? Did they all drink the Kool-Aid? Oh, shit. Think I'll go talk to Ernest. He's a black servant over at Judge Ravenel's house. Even if there's a ceremony at the temple, sure as heaven, Ernest ain't got invited. In memory of Catherine Wilson, 1810-1885, widow of John Wilson. Wait, so she's dead already? That big place is Judge Ravenel's house. He's also one of the founding members of the temple. They say I'm a father of glorious been friends since childhood. Oh, they say him. Okay. They say him and Father Glory has been friends since childhood. Okay, now I get it.
gunshot in the distance. Well, this is before they send the National Guard in. The judge and the father was just a couple of regular farmers from Needle, Alabama. But now, look at him. One's the county judge, and the other's our dear father, Glorious. Leave it in thy Lord's hands, for thou can't grasp his ways. Father Glorious said that in a sermon just the other day. The faint sound of leaves rustling in the wind makes, makes it feel so lonesome and mournful, as if the whole world's dead and gone. Hopefully Ernest will tell me where the whole town's gone to. I'd like to say my goodbyes, because ain't no knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. And more gunshots. Where are they coming from? Let's go. Hello, Ernest. For dread sakes, please tell... What the fuck? Oh my lord, who's a shooting and firing? Stop firing, it's me, old Godfrey, doggone it. Who's out there? I better hide behind the house before I get shot. I got to sit tight and be extra quiet. I'm trembling all over. I can't stop shaking. Look at my hands, just won't stop quivering. Town's been talking that this day would come. Most of the folks lost their trust, but they should have stayed silent. They know darn well what the Temple Guard is capable of. Oh shit. There's guards for the frickin' church. We gotta get out of here. Dear lords, please save me. I hope I'm safe here. I just got hush, not make a much as a squeak. We told George Grady that he's asking for muck by raising too many questions. Don't he know what became of all the others that doubted the father? The temple got ears everywhere. Now look at the dreaded mess we're in. Let's be sneaky, sneak around the house. I can't hear him no more. I think the guards went back to the temple. Let me try again at Furnace's home. My old heart's thumping too fast. It ain't good for me. Please, Ernest, beg you, open up. I'm terrified. I ain't breathing so good, and I'm parched. I need... Looks like they're still here. I need to find a place to hide quick. Dang it, it's locked. This one locked too. Guards are close. Oh Lord, please make them gone. Let me go have a peek. It's like interesting, just as a story, you know? My God, curse those darn guards. I reckon they went back to the temple. That's what you thought last time. That still don't explain why all the folks is. Everyone gone and disappeared into the fogs, all I know. Farmer Jim lives in that house down yonder, and that's his barn next door. He's a firm and fervent believer, oh, Father Glorious. 
never misses a sermon or ceremony at the temple. He's always dressed in his fine white cottons for all the rituals. Says he's been to all of them. Say at least his horse and cows ought to be there. Seeing any sign of life will be heaven sent for my soul. Felt terribly alone and empty. Could have sworn I heard for footsteps. Let's get the hell out of here. There ain't no animals, no horse, no cows. One of Jim's cows had a calf that was recently sacrificed. Jim would have personally sacrificed his old trusted steed if father so asked. Man, the townsfolk's been giving Jim the cold shoulder recently. George Grady told us to be careful what we tell him because Jim's only loyal to the temple. Jim has changed an awful lot since he became a believer. He weren't like this. A rotten stench is coming out of that old shed. I wonder what remains. Jim put in there, but it's decomposing and giving a rancid smell. No use of this firewood no longer. It's been laying here untouched for years. The whole town's supposed to gather in this field tomorrow for the decisive day. Father Glorious had it. His heavenly vision in the same field more than 20 years ago. Angels came down and gave him the holy revelation. That was the day regular old Avery Cartwright became our father glorious. I often sit here and stare at the skies to maybe catch a glimpse of those angels. They say Father Glorious' black hair instantly turned ash and white after this encounter. I remember once meeting Jim after the first of the rituals. He had a crazy look in his eyes like that old madman or a murderer. He smelled of smoke and burning, kept chanting glory, glory, glory. Like a raven lunatic, he became feverish after that almost a week. That used to be Father. That used to be Father Glorious's house, but now he, it belongs to Warden Henry. So that's a good idea. I'll head to Cartwright Prison, and maybe they'll know what the deal is. I'm sure the prisoner's still around. See, I ain't no dummy. That everyone makes me out to be. How do I get there? Oh, oh. shit. What? Look, get out of here. <laughs>